Shalom, Shalom. It's your brother Wab Ramya. Back with another lesson. Lord willing to be edifying. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Muhammad Kakodash, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah. Double honest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwaf that believe and have faith in Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah in these last days. Just praying to be a part of the hopeful elect. Um, I got another lesson I want to bring out. I did one earlier, uh, but I had to cut it short because I had to do a had too much going on, man. I had to do some things with my, my buns, man. So I was just going through some videos of mine, and I want to make a lesson, man, going into you uh, Israelites repenting, man, because, man, shit is speeding up faster, man, than you ever would know. Let's get this one. Hope y'all got your med refills set up for November 1st. Hope you got them ready. You got two weeks before November 1st. Make sure your meds are good because it sounds like Walgreens is about to go on strike. The pharmacies in the back of Walgreens, they're talking about going on strike. And it's not because of pay. It's not because of pay. It's because of conditions, okay? I know what you're thinking. I don't go to Walgreens. CVS is thinking about it, too. CVS is thinking about going on strike. Some of their locations are, at least. And we're thinking, oh, I'll go to Rite Aid. Rite Aid just declared bankruptcy. And here's the conditions. Here's the problem that we're having right now. You see, you have these pharmacies and the pharmacy techs, Right? You've gone to the pharmacy, you know what I'm talking about. If you get regular medication, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those people are running full sprint marathons for eight fucking hours straight. Their whole shift is front to back running like dogs. They're trying to fill meds. They're trying to answer the phone. They're trying to answer the fucking register. They're trying to answer the fucking drive through like it's a goddamn Wendy's. Then they're trying to administer vaccines and testing on people. They just added a minute clinic. A lot of these places now are demanding that the, that the customers, like myself, go and order our medication through apps because we, we there's nobody to answer the phone. So we got to use an app, which means that the people working in the pharmacy have to show people how to use the app. And the people who are in front of me at the goddamn pharmacy are 89 years old and Korean War veterans. And they don't need to know how to use a fucking app on a goddamn Android. But these people are sitting there. They're making good money. The people working at these pharmacies, they are making good money. They just don't have enough fucking bodies to get through the day. And the thing is, is corporate isn't going to listen. Because corporate looks at the bottom fucking line. And the bottom fucking line says, we're making good money and we ain't paying a lot of fucking payroll. That's the best Thing that corporate could ever look for. It's a KPI. It's a key performance indicator. They ain't looking at the performance that you and I look at when we see an employee in a pharmacy running back and forth trying to teach a 78-year-old person how to open up the fucking iTunes store to download an app so they can order the fucking medication to get a boner again. They don't, they don't have to see that. They just look at a percentage at the bottom of a fucking spreadsheet and then they turn to BlackRock and Vanguard and say, we're doing great, fellas. But we see it. We see the fear and the hesitancy and the fucking exhaustion in these people's eyes. And then as we're standing 15 people deep at 5.15 p.m. on a fucking Wednesday trying to get the medication we need because if we eat goldfish crackers, we get fucking heartburn at 39. We notice the same thing they notice, which is that there's two fucking registers here, and the second one has never been fucking open ever. There isn't enough staff, and they're not willing to hire. And I know what you're thinking. I'll go someplace else. A lot of them are starting to go under now. They're starting to go fucking bankrupt because those same fucking executives who went and said we have enough staff when we don't, are the same ones who told all these pharmacies to look the other way when all these prescriptions for Oxycontin were being written. And now those same fucking executives lost all of their fucking trials and now they have to pay out. They have to pay out to the families and the victims that we lost to the opioid epidemic. So here we are. Here we are. Just stuck in a cycle. Back and forth forever. Oh, you saw through, man. He just don't realize his kingdom is gone, man. And you see how red he got? Look how red he got. Look, how, look at his neck, man. Look, look at his flag up in the corner, man. These people are done, man. 
the information you brought out about the strike uh, going into the uh, strike of the uh, pharmacies, man, that's, that's true, man. These pharmacies are going under quick, quick, man. So these people are going to lose their goddamn old mind once they realize that their money is nothing. They can't get their medicines to cope with the the reality of um, of, of America. They're going to lose it, man. These people, they worried about these um, these uh, Palestinians and all these Gazans and migrants and all them. Should just wait till these people can't get their medicine, man. And wait till their dollars collapse, man. These people are going to lose their goddamn mind, man. Now check this out. This is um, this lady is going into all the the um, parks are through, man. <laughs> they done gave away all the parks, man. Um, Yellowstone, um, um, was it Smoky? Smoky Mountains Park, all these major parks are gone, man. They threw. They gave them away, man. Now check this out, man. And it's all set, it's all strategically set up, man, because people are gonna, these parks I done been to are the Smoky Mountain Park, and it's in the mountains, man. You, you can hide and um, bug out or whatever. You know how people want to bug out and shit like that. They're going to make it where you can't even bug out, man. They're setting everything up. This global, uh, well, I say, I ain't going to say global, which it is global, but this American, this American, um, uh, um, the Amer in America, you're not going to, they're going to make it where you're not going to be able to run and hide, man. You're not going to be able to bug out anywhere. And these parks that they have set up that, um, you know, people have been going to for many years, they're going to have them closed off where you're not going to be able to go and, into the wilderness and, and hide. Check this out. I just come across a TikTok and I had to go research it myself. I am lost for words. I did not know this. I don't know if it's true or not, but everywhere I've looked, it's everywhere. So I want you to pause and read this and look at all these paragraphs. Stop down here, pause and read, watch. National parks are gone, man. Belongs to the now United the Nations. Video. Here's the big National Park Service .org. Yellowstone it says right here, the United Nations designated Yellowstone National Park as a World Heritage Site and Biosphere Reserve. Okay, now why would the United Nations need to designate anything on America's land? Well, when was it done? 1978. Around 200 years after the Revolutionary War, they found a way to infiltrate America with the Trojan horse. Here is something that was written by Melissa Weirbrock. Weirbrock. 1972 treaty grants United Nations control over American historical landmarks. I'll put the link in the description. You could read it here, but here's a few landmarks that they apparently have control over. Statue of Liberty, Thomas Jefferson's home, the Washington Monument, the Brooklyn Bridge, Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Florida Everglades. Also, the Grand Canyon. That's a lot of land that the United Nations own. So if you ever think about hiding out in these national parks or these national places during the apocalypse, well, you might be met with the United Nations. As I kept researching, I came across this. And how the UN plans to break apart and occupy America following the Red Dawn invasion. Kept digging, and here we go. Did that say Project Lucid? Now I want to read you the bottom of this. Meanwhile, foreign immigrants from India, China, Pakistan, Bulgaria, Russia, and other nations are being recruited for this National Park Service police duty because, unlike U.S. nationals, non-English speaking foreigners will not hesitate to carry out orders and shoot American citizen intruders. Is that why they're letting them through the border? Let me know what you think. Yeah, so you're not going to be able to hide in these places, man. They setting it up perfectly. They're, they're, they're having this, this global net around the whole entire globe, man. Especially here in Babylon the Great, which like I said, it's gonna be everywhere, but here, 
they setting it up perfect, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, they setting it up perfect for if you're not repenting, returning to your how about Shimmy Al Shah, you're gonna be stuck out there, man. Because these places, the Great Smoky Mountains, and she said uh, Yellowstone, the, the, all these places, man. Especially like the um, the Grand Canyon, man. These places, you, you got good location. You know, you can you can probably pretty much hide out from. You know what I'm saying? When they come in, you know what I'm saying? Pursuing you, flood. Like, you know, like the scriptures tell you to come in like a flood. These places are going to be covered, man, with, like you said, foreign troops, man. They're going to shoot you on sight. So, man, this is the time to repent, man. All hell is about to break loose, man. You just feel it through the spirit, man. So much is going on, man. You can't keep up with it. And it's all set up, man. Let's listen to this. Sure, but is there definitionally an invasion of this country, ma'am? It's not. It's not just an invasion. It is an invasion, but an invasion that is part of a long-term plan and political ideology to uh, obliterate the sovereignty of this nation and change the way the world looks forever. It's not just America's sovereignty that's on the chopping block. It's, it's sovereignty all over the world. It's just that this is the place that is the, the light and the guide for the whole world. And what I learned from a source who is a very unique source, having um, infiltrated uh, the globalist cult at the UN level, is that he was in high-level meetings that required a number of security clearances, where they actually discussed the plan to bring 100 million people into the United States in order to pave the way for a regional government of US, Canada, and Mexico. And what I learned from a source, who is a very unique source, having um, infiltrated uh, the globalist cult at the UN level, is that he was in high-level meetings that required a number of security clearances where they actually discussed the plan to bring 100 million people into the United States in order to pave the way for a regional government of U.S., Canada, and Mexico. And that was to bring in 100 million people from Latin American countries together with a strategy of creating these cartels, making life unbearable. It's called a push-pull strategy where they push all these people out of these countries where it's unbearable living uh, like this, and they pull them into the United States. And then once you reach that critical number of over 100 million in, in this invasion, they will then propose that, well, for your family and friends back home who need, you know, you need ease of travel, they need a better life, and so on and so on, and we can do all this better with a regional government than we can with a U.S. government. And they will have enough critical mass inside the country in order to affect that policy. That's, that's the globalist plan that we're working towards. But what we're already doing is living under their policy, where they've made uh, the right to migrate a human right, recognized the UN in 2018, and that now supersedes our sovereign right, thanks to the Biden administration and the open border ideologues who are in this government. So, yeah, you see it, man. As uh, Biden put a bill in to... Um to send a couple billion dollars for the border, man. But it's too late, man. And I believe, I ain't saying what she's saying is wrong, but I believe it was a hundred million into to, to, uh, America and Europe because Europe is being flooded as well, man. They're being flooded as well. And our people, you blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, man, that, that rejected this truth and didn't believe in the report that we brought out that Babylon the Great is finished, man. It is over. Your, your your hope and your your pride is in this country, man, is done, man. And we're telling you, you know what I'm saying? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, repent. Because these things are finna spiral out of control very, very fast. As the Middle East is spiraling out of control, man. We know that the thermonuclear missiles are not going to be shot off until the MOTB is presented to the whole entire globe, man. Especially Babylon the Great, man. When it's presented here... And it's mandated, you know that the destruction is very close. But the Lord is setting it up perfectly, man. Everything is on the table. And like the Apostle Tahar brought out that um, he just had a coin this year, the year of all all the uh, prophecies being fulfilled, man. You can't tell me all these prophecies are not being fulfilled right before our eyes, man. This is uh, Isaiah 45, and I'm going to start at verse 2. And it says, I will go for, I will go before thee and make the corrupt places straight. And that's your how about Shem Shah telling the hopeful elect, man. Well, he woke us up to this truth and gave us his word through the spirit and power of your how about Shem Shah. And our crooked, what we didn't know and understand, you know what I'm saying, a couple years back before you came to this truth, we know it now, man. 
He says, I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. So he's, he's removed that yoke of iron off of us, man. Two thirds of our people still had that slave mentality still in them, man. He says, and I will give thee the treasure of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. And we got that through the Holy Spirit, man, through the scriptures. That thou mayest know that I, thee, it's like the, the I, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, which call thee by name. See, all, the Lord knows us personally, man. And everybody say, you try to get, get your, you need to get a personal um, relationship with the Lord. No, man. The Lord already has a personal understanding with the people that he has chosen. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. It ain't Jesus or Cesar Bozier or any of these other gods, man. The Lord has called on us by name, man. That's what scriptures tell you. Many are called, but few are chosen, man. And we're trying to endure to the end so we, we can make our calling and election sure, man. But the Lord has called us by name. He says, which call thee by name, I am the power of Israel, man. So if you're not calling on the power of Israel, you're not chosen, man. The Lord has not calling you. For, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. See that? The Lord has an elect of, of the nation of Israel, man. It says, I have even called thee by thy name. The Lord has called us by our names and woken us up to this truth, man, because he knew what Jeremiah was at one in verse five. He, he knew us from the womb, man. So if you believe in this truth and you have faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, and you, you know, you don't, you still, you know, on the fence, man, not, not understanding what, what times are in, man, then, then you're not chosen because you need to seek the Lord 10 times more once you heard this word, man. It says, I have surnamed thee, thou, thou has not known, though thou has not known me. See, the Lord has blessed us to get this understanding, even though we didn't understand this, man. We didn't, we didn't know him when we was in the world. But the Lord has chosen us and woken us up to this truth, man. It says, I am Yahweh by Shem Yahweh and there is none else. We know for a fact there is no other power, man. There's nothing else we can seek but Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. There is no there is no power besides me. I gird thee, though thou hast not known me. And the Lord has truly blessed us, man, to come into this faith, man, to come into this truth, come back to our heritage, come back to our power, man. We didn't know the Lord, but the Lord chose us, man. And that's why we continue to prophesy because you might not have heard the caller when he called your name and you had to have somebody help you wake up, man. And that's, that's the lot that we're coming in, man. Like John the Baptist, man. Giving you, this, giving you the understanding of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua before we came. And that's what the same thing we're doing now. We're hurling in for the Lord, man. The Lord, telling you the Lord is returning, man. Very, very soon. This is Ezekiel 22. Because if you don't wake up, man, before the Lord comes, your judgment is, is to be destroyed, man. Every time I get two scriptures on this app, I, I can research the whole, I can get all my lesson planned on that app. And as soon as I start to get a couple scriptures, it'll freeze up, man. This is Ezekiel 22. Let me get to it. I don't know why it does that, man. 22, and I'm going to drop down to verse 18. It says, Son of man, the house of Israel is to become droth, dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. See that? The Lord is telling you, man, you're going to be sacrificed, man, in the furnace, man. Because the Lord, let me read that again. It says, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. And that's the Lord, man. Useless, man. He says, all they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the, in the midst of the furnace. They are even the, dr the dross of silver. Therefore, thus said Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Powell, because ye are all become dross, behold, Therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. Let me get the word dross real quick. Let me just get a Google definition. I like that other Bible because I can just pull it up real fast, man. I ain't got to go to another page. Let me see. It's... The impurities, dross, the impurities of silver separated 
from the one in, in, in process of melting. So the Lord is telling you, man, the, 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 the hopeful elect is going to be purged out from the, the, um, from the two thirds, man. The one third is being purged out from the wicked, man. Two thirds of our people. See if it has kind of it's working again. Let me get this back to this page. Easy to maneuver. Uh, this is uh back in um, Ezekiel twenty two. So that we know what dross mean, man. That means to take away the impurities from silver or these metals. Let's read it one more time. The impurities of silver separated from the one in the process of melting. See that you got to melt them to get the the impurities out, man. And that's what's going to happen to two-thirds of our people. They're going to be melted in the land of their captivity. He says, 19, it says, Therefore, thus say how about Shem Yahushah, power, because ye are all become dross. Behold, therefore, I will gather you in the midst of Jerusalem as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace. See that? The Lord is gathering two-thirds of his people, man, for this great furnace. And that's why a lot, a lot of those uh, migrants are Israelites. They're, they're not from another nation. They're all Israelites. I ain't, like, ain't going to say all the Israelites, but majority of those, of those men, women, and children that's coming away from, coming away from these nations, especially from the, um, the South, 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 uh, South America, there are a lot of those are uh, Israelites, man. And a lot of those, are, a lot of those, those uh, men, women, and children are coming up here to be destroyed, man. In this furnace I'm reading about. It says, <clears throat> to blow, let me read 20 again. It says, as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it. See that? To blow the fire upon it. Man, that's what's coming, man. Thermonuclear missiles are coming to bring that fire in the furnace. This is the furnace, man. This place is being set up as a furnace. It's going to be, it's going to be, a, it's going to be very, very hot, man, when the missiles hit, man. I think one of the brothers that brought up a while back at camp, he was uh, bringing up that, uh, those missiles get up to a million degrees Fahrenheit, man. So just imagine 200 million missiles hitting Babylon the Great, man. It's going to be a great furnace. He says, to melt it, so will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there to melt you. See, the Lord is going to, he's going to save one third of his people, man. The hopeful elect. But two thirds are going to be left here to be melted, man. And that's why we, 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 we continue to teach his word, man, for our people to wake up, man. We continue to teach his word to edify our people to wake up and to, 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 to push his word out to people that might not even go on YouTube, man, or, or any other social media, man. That's why we're going to highways and byways, man. There's somebody never may even touch a computer. But the thing is, if you don't repent in the time that the Lord has... For you to repent, you're going to be left in Babylon the Great, which is America, to be melted. Verse 21, he says, Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath. That's plain, man. Because those missiles are going to come, and the Yahweh Shem is going to come with that concentrated fire out of those chariots, man. And ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted. In the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I, Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, have poured out my fury upon you. Whew. Man, I, I, I can't get that. In, I mean, I can get another translation. I often say, I don't need to get that in another translation. That's plain, man. The Lord is going to leave two thirds of his people in Babylon the Great to be melted. And the times are coming very fast, man. As you see, the war is starting to pick up in the Middle East, man. The Lord is setting this place up to be the furnace that he's going to melt the people in, man. This is uh, Nahum. I just want to get the point in verse 1 and 2. It says, um, Power is jealous. And Yahweh by Shem Yahushua revengeth. Yahweh by Shem Yahushua revengeth. And he is, and he is, he is furious. And his, like, let me slow down. And furious. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth his wrath for his enemies, man. So he's reserving his wrath for his enemies, but two thirds of his, two -thirds of his people that don't want to wake up to this truth and understanding what times we're in and who they are 
are going to be sent here to be judged with with his enemies, man. It ain't going to be no um the Lord ain't going to say you know like these um these uh, small hatters talking about they, they um those people in in Gaza use a human shields and vice versa they do for each each one they they use their own people for human shields. I'm speaking of the small hatters. All these nations do do that, man. In war, they always use human shields. But the thing is, the Lord is, is not going to have human shields, man. Everybody that's supposed to be judged will be judged. So it, the Lord ain't going to be, he ain't going to say, these, I'm, my enemies are hiding behind my people. No, nah, man. You're going to be judged the same way as his enemies, man. And that's why we, we continue to harp on repent, repent, repent. Because the judgment is coming, man. No matter if you believe it or not, man. Don't, if you think it's in another lifetime or 10 years down the road, Wherever you believe is, is coming, man, it's coming. And I believe it's very soon, man. The next next couple of days. I ain't gonna even, I ain't gonna give it a time frame for it, but we see the World War Three is building up to the, the tipping point. Now, you know, the small hatters are threatening Russia, man. So that, that little skirmish over there with the yellow and blue country, man, that, that's over with, man. They they they, they turn their height, they turning their uh, uh sight on the Middle East now, man. The valley of Yahweh Shapat. See, the Lord has stirred up all the people in that area, man. They're shooting missiles off, man. I've seen where Iran has opened their silos up, man. And Babylon, the great army, is over in Jordan, man. So everything is everything is, is pl in place, man. So we know the MOTB is coming very soon, man. But our people don't know what the MOTB is and don't know what times we're in. And that's the reason why the, the men of the Lord are, are, are bringing these things to you, man. This is a uh, Nahum one and three. It says, "Yahweh by Shimei al Shai is slow to anger." So you got a little time, man, to repent, man. You got a little time. That's why we got we we still got time to put these lessons on the internet, man. Because when you know it's over with, it's over with, man. Now ain't no lessons going on the internet. Ain't no nobody's gonna be on the highways and byways. The men of the Lord, um, tongue goes cleave to the roof of their mouth. There won't be no more prophesying. It'll be all judgment time, man. See, the Lord is giving you warning now to, to get right. Three again, it says, Yahweh by Shimei al is slow to anger and great in power and will and will not at all acquit the wicked. See that? He, he said, not at all acquit the wicked, man. So you're not going to be able to get out of this judgment that's coming, man. He said he would not at all acquit the wicked. Yahweh by Shimei al has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and in the clouds are the dust of his feet, man. And those chariots, man, is going to be thousands upon thousands of, man, chariots, man. Thousands of them, man. And you're not going to be able to escape, man. That's the point. You're not going to be able to escape the judgments of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. This is like Esau is cutting off everything in Babylon the Great, where it makes, where you can't escape his his wrath, his judgment. It's all Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah's judgment. He just using Esau on the left hand side. I always said it in my lessons, because our people think the devil is a a little red man under the under the earth, man. No, it's a so called white man, the red man on the earth. The Lord uses him on the left hand side through the spiritual demon Satan. But like he Esau's cutting off every every um every um escape route for you, two thirds to think you can bug out and get you a couple guns and shit. Nah, man. You have, you're going to have to either repent or you're going to be put to death, man. In the hood, they say you get, you either get down or lay down. That's the, that's, the, that's the only way out, man. You either get down or lay down. This is uh, Ezekiel 33 and verse 12. It says, Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgressions, man. There's no way out, man. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his, his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day of in the day that he sin, sinneth. So, so you you you, you got to stay on the straight and narrow path, man. You can't get weak and fall short of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. And like he's uh, uh um, these brothers you, th you thought that was in the truth. Like uh, um, Jephthah down in um, Dallas, he was one body in the spirit of the Lord. You can just you can just see it in his face, man. The spirit of the Lord is is is, is 
gone from him, man. He, he never had it, but just the, just the fact he was calling on the name of the Lord, and you thought, well, damn, you got an inkling of the truth. He was out on highways and byways, and the Lord stripped everything from him, man. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living power, man. Now, I seen a video with the, uh, the elder uh, Yashawamba did, and he brung out, man, he said that um, a, a Jephthah from the one body said that um, Hitler was a, a so-called black man. Now, now, now that's, that's bug out talk right there, man. That, that's bug out talk, man. So the Lord stripped him from everything he even knew and gave him, and gave him a reprobate mind, man. Same as the um, the ex head of um, um, uh, Mississippi, man. They called him another another god, man. Something that they wouldn't even talk, man. Trying to be deep and, and trying to seek love from other people, man. That they think that they can they can come up with another doctrine or another or another way. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They, what, they, what they say? Um, saying goes uh, invent a new wheel, man. This right here was playing. When I when I heard this truth, man, I knew it was the truth, man. And I, I, I've been in that truth like going on nine years now. And, when the, and I've been with the Apostles and Elders of Great Millstone the, 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 the entire time. You know, when I first came in, I was just watching videos. I didn't know, you know what was going on. I said the first three, four months. And when I heard you how about Shimmy I was shy, that was it, man. And I pray I always stay on the straight and narrow path, man. Because this is the truth, man. No doubt about it, man. My, I have had many visions. I have had... Have seen things in the, in, in, in 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 my flesh, man. Chariots and different, all type of things, man. Spiritual things, man. And I know this is the right way, man. This is verse thirteen, Ezekiel thirty three and thirteen. It says, "When I shall say, when I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust in his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered." See that. You going on the highways and byways, and then on, uh, and then turn away from what you was taught and what you know. What I'm saying you first believed. You're not gonna. The Lord is not gonna have mercy on you, man. You're gonna be considered a two third, man. This like I just seen a brother video. He said oh, this ain't the time to, to 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 start doing crazy shit, man. I think the elder from um, um, South Carolina was saying that this ain't the time to be on some dumb shit, man. Some bullshit, man. Stick with what you know, man. Don't try to invent the wheel, man. It's already invented, man. The wheel is turning, man, beautifully. 14 again, it says, now 13, the end of 13. Let's read 13 again. It says, when I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trust in his own righteousness. And that's plain, man. I don't even have to break that down. You should surely live. You believe me, how about Shemmy al -Shai? But if you trust in your own righteousness and believe it and think like these brothers are just, uh, not even brothers no more. These men that you once was in the truth, what they believed in, they once believed in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Now they, ain't, they don't believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. They believe in their own righteousness. He says, and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he have committed, he shall surely die for it. See that you try to reinvent the wheel, man. This is this is this is exactly what we need to do, is man. Continue in the apostles' doctrine. That's it, man. That's it. Because what we've been taught is undoubtedly the truth, man. If the apostles and elders ain't switching from it, why should we? And the scripture tell you, um, I forgot how I go. Uh, roughly paraphrasing, those are given to change. We shouldn't be given to change, man. This is it, man. Everything the apostles have taught us through the scriptures is, is, is coming to pass right before our eyes, man. There's no other way to go. It's no, it's no other, it's no other way, man. And we are blessed to notice notice and believe this truth, man. Because like I just said, these, these two guys that was once in the truth have, have, has <laughs> fallen all the way off, man. And I mean, I'm not in the, I'm not in the, um, I don't know those, I know those uh, men personally, but damn, man. The shit y'all was saying ain't even they don't even make sense, man. And that's just, that's just if I was you know what I'm saying, uh, um if you know what I'm saying, that's like just say for example, the people that know me locally, if I just came all of a sudden uh starts saying um Cesar Bourger, now they'll look at me crazy, like, man, you were so strong and had faith in you know what I'm saying, how my shimmy out shot, now you done switched up, man. Man, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man.
I, mean, I said the water, y'all, by Shemel Shah, but keep me firm in this truth, man. I pray that I continue to stay firm in this truth, man. This is Jeremiah 15, in verse 1, it says, Then say ye how about Shemel Shah unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people, man. So the Lord is not going to have mercy on two-thirds of our people, man. And I don't know how many lessons I've done uh, with, with this scripture. He says, and it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, whether shall we go forth? Then thou shalt say, then shalt thou tell them, thus say you how about Shimei Shah, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity, man. So the Lord has t told you four kinds of death you're going to suffer for not repenting, coming to him. And he said, though Moses and Samuel stood, Moses and Samuel were great prophets, man, for you how about Shemuel Shah. And he loved them dearly, man. But even though those great men stood for the children of Israel, he had mercy on us. But now he's not going to have mercy on them, man. And the mercy and the grace is coming. The doors are closing, man. And that's what we're warning you of. The door of mercy is closing, man. That grace period is coming to an end. Verse 3, Jeremiah 15, 3, it says, And I will appoint over you over them four kinds. That's four kinds of death. Sef Yahweh by Shem Shah. The sword to slay, the dogs to tear, the fowls of heaven, the fowls of heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy, man. So the Lord is telling you, man, these four kinds of death you're going to die from, man, for not repenting, man. That's heavy, man. Because this is the, the, the creator, man. The, the, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is the creator and his son is coming to destroy two-thirds of his people, man. And you're not going to have a, a cloak for your sins, man. You didn't believe the report. You didn't believe that the men of the Lord was telling you the truth, man. This is uh, Matthew 3 and verse 1. It says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. And we came, we come in the same state as John the Baptist, man. Preaching to you, repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. We're doing the same thing John the Baptist was doing, man. We're telling you the same exact thing. And John the Baptist didn't, he didn't, he looked like a, he looked like a rough man, man. He wasn't in no church with no, no suit and a nice car, big old house and a big old church. No, man, he was in the wilderness, man. He was preaching in the wilderness, man. So this thing is not a, a pretty thing like people think it should be. You know what I'm saying? You know, the older people, you know what I'm saying? They, they think you should be, have to go to church and dress up like it's a social gathering, man. And that's all church is, is a social gathering, man. It has nothing to do with the truth. It has nothing to do with the scriptures. Absolutely nothing. But John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness, man. And he was saying, repent. And that's what we continue to tell you, man. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we see it. It's at hand, man. They're going to clamp this place down, man. They're going to clamp Babylon the Great down. And you won't ever, you will never, once they clamp this place down, man, it's going to be a famine, man. Because I know um, the gov, um, John, uh, not John, um, um, Joe, Joe, uh, Sleepy Joe said when, when um, this war starts, they're going to ration food out, man. They're going to, they're going to send another great sickness on the earth. And you're not going to be able to get this truth anymore, man, because they're going to, they're going to, it's going to be, they're going to cut the lights out, man, all type of shit, man, can't tell you exactly what's going to happen, but we're telling you to repent before these things come, because they're definitely coming, now check this out, man, and it says, the headline says, a call to repentance, this is your Howard Shah, man, it says, there, there were present at that season, some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate made mingled with their sacrifices. And Yahweh Shah answered, said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the, the Galileans. So just say an example if the, the elect, 
We was we was with the two thirds of our people, as the, you know. Just to give you an example of the Galileans, were were the, the these men more wiser than these other men, or was these more wicked than these other men? No, man, they repented, and, and it's going to say that for the most part. You know, if you can if you can receive it, Yahweh uh, verse two it says, and Yahweh shall answering, and and uh, answering said unto them, suppose ye that the Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffer such things. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall, ye shall all likewise perish. And that's how we shall tell them plain, man. It ain't, it ain't that we, the, the, we, we, we proclaim to be, you know, we, we speaking through faith that we are the hopeful elect compared to somebody we call a two third. Not saying we are not no, no uh, not you, you you being a two we call you a two third. Not saying you a sinner more above us, but we repented. That's the thing. That's what Yahweh Shah was telling them. He says, "No, I tell you no. Nay, I tell you nay. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish, man." So we are telling you, man, if you don't repent like we did, you gonna you gonna perish, man. This is what Yahweh Shah was telling them, man. Verse four it says, "Or those eighteen upon whom the the tower in Shalom, Shalom fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish, man. So like I said, I'm making a, 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 a distinction between the one-third and the two-thirds. Not saying the two thirds are more sinners than we, but you know what I'm saying. Mom probably done did a lot of more wickedness than we have. Not saying all of them, because you got a lot of people that, that believe they're doing right. You know, I'm doing good things and feeding the homeless and all type of stuff like that. But the thing is, not saying that we being be claiming to be a part of hopeful elect, Lord willing, we are. But not saying we are, we we haven't sinned or we you sin more than we have. The thing was, you how why you how I was telling them. And at least you repent. That's the thing, man. You have to repent. And let me get this in another translation, man, so it make it even clearer. And this is in the this is in the um the New Living Translation. Plain. It's in red. It says, About this time Yahweh was informed that Pilate had murdered some people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. Do you think those Galileans, because they were sacrificing because of their sins, do you think their Galileans were worse sinners than all of the people from Galilee? So the Lord presented a question to them. Do you think those, those people that was put to death worse sinners than all other people from Galilee? No, man, you know it's a lot of people that did the same exact thing, man. So the Lord presented a question to him, man. Yahweh Shah asked, Is that why you is that why they suffered? No. Let me slow down. He said, is that why they suffered? He says, Not at all. This is Yahweh Shah speaking now. And you will perish too unless you repent of your sins. And turn to power. That's exactly what we do on the highways and byways, man. We teaching you. We we we're calling for you to repent. We're calling for you to repent, man. That's plain, man. I'm gonna read that one more time. This is Howard Shah's words, man. It's in the red, man. It's, there's no way around the scripture. The end of verse two, he says, Yahweh Shah answered, "Is that why they suffered?" He's, he presented another question. He, they uh, they got they got killed by Pilate. Do you think, is that the reason why they suffered? He told them, not at all. And all you will perish too. See that? He told them, you're going to do this. You, the same thing will happen to you too, man. Unless you repent to your, of your sins and turn to power, man. That's the only way to get out of this judgment that's coming. And about the, and, and, like it, and what about the 18 people who died when the tower of Shalom fell on them? See that? It was a gruesome death, man. He says, "Were they the worst? Were, was they worse sinners than in Jerusalem? So those people that died for that gruesome death 
Were they worse, worse sinners than any other person in Jerusalem? Presented another question to him. He said, no. And I tell you again, that unless you repent, you will perish too. Unless you repent, you're going to rep you're going to perish too, man. So you're going to see a lot of madness coming, man. A lot of people getting put to death in all kind of ways, man. All kind of ways. And it's going to be worse. <laughs> it's going to probably be the worst thing you ever seen in your life, man. But the thing is, if you repent, the Lord will have mercy on you, man. He is written. It's written, man. Let me get one more and I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. Let me get one, one more. This is Matthew 4. Let's get the point at 16 and 17. I'll read it in both, both translations. So I already got it up. It says, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, man. And that's the elect, man. We've seen a great light through the word, man. We got this word, man. We ran with it, man. And I always speak of myself, man. I didn't, I didn't just start off teaching, man. I had to be built up, man. I had to be built up, man. It took time. I had to be built up, man. I, and I know for a fact I had to be built up, man, because I studied lessons, man. I had a, for the first year, I, I didn't have a even script. I didn't have a Bible. I wrote down the scriptures for an entire year. One year. I didn't even have a Bible. I wrote the scriptures down. And then over time, I started, you know, celebrating the Sabbath with my my, my family, man. Understanding, the, you know what I'm saying, and getting built up in the spirit, watching videos continually. And then the spirit of the Lord came on me to teach, man. But the point is, we've seen that great light, man, in this, in this dark and dark and gloomy world, man. 16 again, it says, the people have who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who live in the land where death cast it, its shadow, a light sh has shined. See that? We live in the valley of the shadow of death, man. So let me read that again. It says, and those who live in the land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. And that's on the, on the hopeful elect, man. We seen our friend. I done seen plenty of friends get put to death, man. Go to jail, all type of shit, man. But that wasn't my lot, man. You know what I'm saying? I ran with him, did all this shit, man. But the Lord had mercy on me, man. He says, from then, Yahweh shall begin to preach, repent for your sins and turn to power for the kingdom of heaven is near, man. This is Yahweh Shah's words, man. He told us that, man. Let me get this in a, in a, in a uh, Hebrew. I mean, not Hebrew. <laughs> King James version. <laughs> I wish I could speak Hebrew fluent like that, though. We, we in the kingdom, we will. We in the kingdom, we will speak fluent Hebrew. Last one. I'm going to get it real quick. It says, this is Matthew, Matthew 4 and 16. It says, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to, and to whom which sat in, that, in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Sprung up. Like I said, that's that's us, man. We got the light now. This truth is our light, and we shine in a, in a dark place, man. Even though we might, you, know, you sometimes you might not think we doing you doing anything right, and you know what I'm saying. Get down to yourself, man. We, we're shining, man. People look to us, not you know what I'm saying. Not saying we famous or look to uh, you know what I'm saying in, in in any personal you know what I'm saying way. But I'm speaking of looking to us to 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 get this truth, man. You know what I'm saying because we are. Examples of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua on the earth, man. And I look at the apostles, the elders, and brothers too, man. I look to them, you know what I'm saying, to continue to build on my faith, you know what I'm saying, by their lessons and, and what they say. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying I'm I'm a, nothing above what I am, man. I'm just a so I'm just a man of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua praying to be a part of the whole That's it, man. But you you gotta clear about you gotta clarify your, the things you say because people will take your words and, and and use them a different way, man. Because this is this is. <laughs> Only for the truth, man. You know, I, you know, what I'm saying you got to kind of clarify the shit, man. Because people, man, they, they, whatever you say wrong, they're taking and use it against you, trying to say you wicked or, or trying to be more than what you are, man. Just, just sometimes, sometimes you can't, you can't make people change their mind. But the thing is, man, people are looking to us, man, in this, in this faith, man, to continue to, to push them in the right direction. Just like a coach, you know, as a coach, the same way, you know, what I'm saying when I was growing up. 
and I coached football myself. But, you know, when I was growing up, I looked at my coach for direction on which way to go. Man, same way the people looking at us, and it's truth, man. That's it. But verse 17, it says, From that time, Yahweh shall begin to preach and say, and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. So Lord willing was edifying. I'm going to end it there. Shalom. Shalom.